In this video, we're going to talk about different ways of doing derivatives and integrals in MATLAB. From this, we'll be able to use these techniques in order to approximate and learn new information about our data sets. First, let us talk about numerical derivatives. And what I mean by this is, let's say I had some data. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And point here, had a point here, had a point here, had a point here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so by the numerical derivative, what I mean by that is the actual slopes between each point. So if I were to connect these here, the, the numerical derivative would give me what's the slope of this line? What's the slope of this line? And what's the slope of this line? And so in order to do that, we can think back to calculus class. And so we denote a derivative by saying dy over dx. This is also the same thing as saying the change in y over the change in x, right? So we want to figure out how y is changing in respect to x. And so there's a function called diff that can help us do this. So in order to figure out, so let's say, let's say, so our x values are, in this example, our x values are 1 to 4. Our y values are 1, 3, 2, 4. So if I wanted to figure out the numerical first derivative, what I would do is I would take the change in my y's, so I can say diff of y. And so diff, what diff does is it takes in a vector of numbers and it finds the difference between adjacent values. So for instance, just as an aside, um, in this case here, if when I do diff of y, this is, um, it's going to do 3 minus 1, which is 2. Then it's going to do 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. Then it's going to do 4 minus 2, which is 2. Okay. And so I'm doing diff of y, and I'm going to divide each of those by the change in x. So it's very important that I'm doing dot divide here because I want to do element by element division. So then I'll do diff of x. And so this will be first. This will be my, my um, numerical first derivative. Okay, so it's taking the change in my y and it's dividing it by the change in my x. And so it's very important to note that when you use the diff function, you're getting back one less number than you started out with. So in this case here, x and y are length 4. However, first is length um, 3. And that's important because what if I wanted to take the numerical second derivative? So that's kind of just like the derivative of the derivative. So I could do like the change in my uh, first over the change in my x. That would be an issue because if I did something like, let's go over here just for more space. If I had second as equal to the diff of my first dot divided by the diff of my x, right? The length of first here, oh, change color. This is length three, so therefore the diff of it is length two, and the length of x is four, so the diff is length three, so I'm trying to do two things divided by three things. And so therefore this errors because of dimension mismatch. Um, so in order to fix this, usually on problems, we'll tell you if, you want you, if we want you to do a second derivative or, or something further than that, we'll tell you either to disregard the first x or the last x value. So in this case, if I wanted to disregard the first x value, I could do something like second is the diff of first dot divided by the diff of x from 2 to the end, that's a colon, 2 to the end. So now I'm taking away one of the values of x so that I have my um, I have my dimensions the same. And so this will be dependent on the problem because if I had gotten rid of the first x value or if I've gotten rid of the last x value, I would get back a different number or a different answer. 
So it's highly dependent on the problem. But this is the numerical derivative, which is essentially just a list of my slopes or the list of my changes in y over the changes in x. So now let's talk about the analytical derivative. Um, so by analytical, I actually mean uh, dealing with a polynomial itself. So using like the power rule and stuff like that. So if I had a function that was like 2x squared plus 4x plus 5, right? If I took the derivative of this using the power rule, I would get back 4x plus Oh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I would do 4x plus 4, right? I think that's right. Yeah, okay. So now the question becomes, how do I actually do this derivative in MATLAB? And so this actually isn't anything new. Uh, this is actually just uh, vector manipulation. Because in a previous video, we talked about uh, how we can have coefficient vectors or vectors that represent coefficients of a polynomial. So the problem is essentially, how do I change a vector that is 2, 4, 5 into a vector that is 4, 4? Okay, And we can think about this through how the power rule works. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm creating, so I'm doing the 2, so I'm taking this power here, I'm doing 2 times the coefficient. I'm taking the power here, which is a 1, I'm multiplying it by that, and then I'm disregarding this last one. But I could also think that I'm taking a zero and multiplying it by the five. Okay, so in this case here, I have all of my powers, which is two, one, and zero. So I want to have powers that are two, one, and zero, and I want to multiply these respectively. So after I multiply them, I would get back four, four, and zero. And then in order to go to my resulting vector here, I just want to delete my last one. So let's write some code in order to do that. So first off, I have my coefficient vector. Okay. And so let's say in this case, my cofs is 2, 4, 5. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create this power vector. I want to create this vector that represents the powers that I want to multiply it by. And so power... I'll call it pow. So pow needs to start, in this case it started at 2, and it started at 2 because that was the order of the polynomial. So the order of our polynomial is the same thing as the length of our coefficient vector minus 1. So I can do the length of cofs, right? So that will be 2 in this case, or this will be 3 in this case, minus 1. So now I'll get 2. And I want to go in steps of negative 1 down to 0, okay? So now I have um, my power vector. And so now I want to do this multiplication. So let's call them new cofs. And that'll be my coefficients dot multiplied by my powers. And then lastly, I have to remove that last um, that last value because the constant goes away. So then I can just say my new cofs at the end is equal to empty brackets. Okay, so in those four lines of code, I'm able to do an analytical derivative. So let's talk about the numerical integral. So by numerical integral, I mean the actual area under the curve, the actual number that represents the area under the curve. So if I had some data, I'm going to draw the same plot that I've been drawing this whole entire time. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, there's a point, there's a point, there's a point, and there's a point. Okay, so the area under the curve, essentially, I want to figure out what is, oh, why is it white? What is this area here, right? The area that is represented underneath this curve. So if I, let's say I connected these with straight lines, sure. Okay, I want to figure out the area under the curve. And I want a numerical answer for that. That's why it's the numerical integral. There's a couple of functions that help us do this. 
The first one is cum sum. So cum sum takes in a vector of y values and it produces back the area under the curve using um, rectangular Riemann sums. So in this case here, I would give it the values of 1, 3, 2, and 4. And so cum sum actually has multiple purposes. It stands for cumulative sum. It takes a, takes a vector and it finds the cumulative sum of it. So, and by that, what I mean is it takes the first number and that's the first number in the vector. Then it adds the next number to the vector to the number that's already inside of there. So this is going to do three plus one. So therefore I'll get four. And then it adds the next one to there as well. So then we have two plus four, so then I get six. And then I'll do four plus six, so then I get 10. So it's the cumulative sum of the vector. Um, however, like this, this has applications to integrals because this is doing the same type of thing as um, treating these as rectangular Riemann sums. And what I mean by that is, let's say I had, um, how do I wanna draw this? How do I wanna draw this? Let's say I had a rectangle like this, goes over here, goes over to here. Oh my goodness, I don't remember how to do Riemann sums. Oh gosh, pretty sure this is not right. Uh, yes, sure. I think I might have think I might have messed that up, but right. So I have these I have these rectangles here, and I can calculate those areas and add them up, and those would be like my um, and I can use those in order to estimate the integral. However, cum sum assumes that all of your points are evenly spaced by one, so all of these areas here are just essentially the same as the y values, and so that's why um, and so if they're if they're not evenly spaced by one, cum sum will not give you the correct value for your uh, integral approximation. But that's how cum sum works, that's one function. Um, the other one is cum traps. So this is, I won't call this y, I don't know why I call this y, let's call this, um, let's call this integral vector. Okay, so cum traps does the exact same thing as cum sum except that it uses trapezoidal approximation traps. Um, and so in this case here, it takes in your x values and it takes in your y values as well because it does not assume that they're evenly spaced by one. So oops, then let's do one, three, two, four. And what it's going to do, oh well, my plot is going to be getting messy. Let's do this in yellow, sure is it's going to create a trapezoid in between our points here. Trapezoid, trapezoid, like that. And then it's going to use the area of those trapezoids in order to estimate the area under the curve. Um, and so in this case here, and as we know from calculus, a lot of the times this is a lot more accurate than just rectangular Riemann sums because you're not overguessing and you're not underguessing as well. Uh, so that's cum traps. So cum traps produces back a cumulative um, vector of our integral. So I don't I don't actually know what these values would be, but in this case here, the first value that's outputted by cum traps, let's do this, is a zero. And then it takes the area of that first trapezoid and then adds it to what it already is. I don't know what it is. It would be a number. So I'm just gonna put a number. And it's gonna take another it's gonna take the trapezoid or the area of the next trapezoid, add it to that previous number, you get another number, and then so on and so forth till the end there. And so that last value, so that's important to note, the last value in each of these is the actual area under the curve. All the values before it are just cumulative sums, but that the last value is the area under the curve. And so that brings us to our last function, which is just traps. So integral. So traps is the exact same thing as cum traps, except all it does is produce back the area under the curve. 
it produces back the last number that would be in QMTRAP's output. So this value and this value are the same number. It does the error into the curve and it just produces back that one singular value. And so these are different ways of taking the numerical integral. So the analytical derivative deals with the actual polynomial itself. So we're trying to take the integral of a polynomial to get back another polynomial. We don't actually care about the actual values. So here, let's say we had 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. If I took the analytical integral of this using the power rule, I would get 2 thirds x cubed plus 4 divided by 2x squared plus 5x plus c, right? And so once again, this just becomes a vector problem. How do I change this vector of coefficients that is 2, 4, 5 into a vector of coefficients that is 2 thirds, 4 halves, 5, and then some constant, okay? And then so notice here, once again, it's the same exact kind of thing that we did with um, with our anal analytical derivatives in the sense that we just have to focus on these powers here, right? So we have that, we have this to the first power, we have this to the zeroth power. And so we can create, and so notice, notice when I wrote out these, actually let's write out, this is over one, okay? We're essentially just dividing these coefficient vectors by another vector of numbers. And so in this case here, I would be dividing this 2, 4, and 5 by a vector that's uh, 3, 2, and 1. And then I just have to stick on a C, whatever constant that the problem tells me to do, and then I get my answer. So let's write some code in order to do that. So I have my coefficients. Let's write it in blue. So I have my coefficients. And so in this case, it's 2, 4, 5. And now I want to create my powers. And so my powers here, I want it to be 3, 2, and 1 in this case. So essentially, in order to get that, I can just go from the length of my coefficients in steps of negative 1 down to 1. Notice this is different than how we did the analytical derivative. And so now if I want to do the division, the order here matters, right? So I can have my new coefficients. So my new coefficients will just be my old coefficients dot divided by my powers. And then lastly, I just want to stick on that C so I can say my new coefficients will be my new coefficients concatenated with my constant. So this would be whatever the problem tells me, let's say before my constant is one, so I could do that. But it's highly dependent on the problem. And so in those couple of lines of code, we can now take the analytical derivative of a polynomial.